Welcome to the Business Miracles Podcast. I'm Heather Dominic, founder of businessmiracles.com. Since 2010, I've been training highly sensitive entrepreneurs and leaders from around the globe to work less while making more impact and income by doing things differently. I'm so glad you've joined me. Listen in and get ready for a shift in the way you view yourself, your work, your life. A business miracle. This is A Course in Business Miracles podcast, episode 144, Transforming Shame. In this podcast episode, I'm sharing five practical approaches to support you with counteracting the shame spiral so you can learn to recognize, identify, and most importantly, transform your unconscious triggered reactions to shame and instead respond from a place of empowerment and strength. We are here today to talk about shame shields, to identify, to recognize, and to transform. Please write that down. Shame shields, identify, recognize, and transform. Our shame shields are directly connected to our experience of resistance. So please take a moment to write that down. Our shame shields are directly connected to our experience of resistance. So for those of you who might be hearing the term shame shields for the very first time, or even those of you who have heard the term before as an opportunity to re-return, to revisit, I want to start by really going into what are shame shields. So first of all, the term comes out of a study done at Wellesley College, particularly the Stone Institute at Wellesley College, and a researcher by the name of Linda Hartling. This research was done in the 1980s. However, Brene Brown has popularized the teaching of shame shields. I want to quote directly from Linda Hartling's research as part of this weekly training roundtable, starting first with that definition of shame. So the word shame comes from a variety of European words that literally mean to cover, to veil, B-E-I-L, to hide to cover, to veil, to hide. The literal meaning of the word is consistent with the individual responses associated with shame. And those individual responses tend to be a response of feeling exposed. So looking and hearing, looking at or hearing this definition helps us to really begin to have a deeper understanding of the way that shame plays out for each and every one of us. There is a feeling of being exposed, yet the word means literally to cover, to veil, to hide. The three shame shields are the shame shield of towards this shame shield of away and the shame shield of against. Going back deeper into each shield and how it connects to our experience as highly sensitive entrepreneurs and leaders. The shame shield of towards connects to that highly sensitive shadow of people pleasing. It also connects to the highly sensitive coping mechanism of pushing. And it also connects to the highly sensitive business miracles archetypes, money archetypes of the scullery maid. So towards people pleasing, pushing, scullery maid. The shame shield of away 
connects to that highly sensitive shadow of overprotection, connects to the coping mechanism of hiding, and connects to the money archetype of the entitled queen. The shame shield of against connects to the shadow of judgment of others. It connects to the coping mechanism of combo platter and connects to both money archetypes of scullery maid and entitled queen. From understanding the what of shame shields, let's turn to the when. So shields are what comes up when experiencing shame. It is the individual response, that feeling of exposed, which triggers the shield. And often the trigger is associated to a historical experience versus what's actually happening in the moment. Where can shame shields occur? Anytime, anywhere. Anytime, anywhere, when we are triggered into that historical experience or association of feeling exposed. Who do shame shields impact? Everyone. How do they impact highly sensitive entrepreneurs and leaders more deeply? Why? Why shame shields? Directly from Linda Hartling's work, I will share the quote first. While most of us can think of at least one occasion in which we felt shamed or humiliated, in many instances, these types of experiences are difficult to identify, difficult to acknowledge, and difficult to express. To recount experiences of shame or humiliation, we risk revisiting painful images of being devalued, disempowered, or disgraced, perhaps triggering or reinforcing further feelings of shame. Yet, below our immediate awareness, these experiences can have a profound and enduring influence over our daily behavior. So in summary, what Linda Hartling is referencing is that shame shields are one of the most difficult things to look at And yet without looking at them, they will have a massive impact on our day-to-day experience. So in that regard, resistance to shifting shame shields and patterns is personally the one primary reason I have seen highly sensitive entrepreneurs and leaders be taken out. Please write that down. It is the one primary reason I have seen highly sensitive entrepreneurs and leaders be taken out. The one thing that will keep a highly sensitive from creating what they want in their business, in their life, The one primary reason that will keep a highly sensitive from answering their life purpose calling. Shame is subversive, it's pervasive, and addressing shame shield is a massive call up into highly sensitive leadership. Addressing your shame shields is the ultimate choice point that you are guaranteed to face over and over again 
on your highly sensitive leadership journey. By not facing or addressing shame shields, I've seen it cost members massive amounts of time, massive amounts of energy, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars, years of pain. I've witnessed it close businesses and I've watched it just destroy valued relationships. The thing that's so valuable to remember about shame is it is an aspect of personal choice. Write that down. We are all adults in this community. So at some point in our younger years, most likely we experienced either an out, an outwardly very deliberate aspect or occasion of being shamed or humiliated. Or in our younger years, we had an inwardly experience of being shamed and humiliated because we were highly sensitive, regardless of whether we had the language for that or not, or both, outward and inward. Now you are an adult. Now you have choice to no longer be triggered into those younger years experiences of shame because of current adult experiences now. You get to engage in rewiring. And now more than ever, at this point in our collective global pandemic experience, that choice is more important than ever. Please write that down. So how do we do that? How do we engage practically in that choice? I'm going to share five approaches from Linda Hartling's work. And I'm going to connect them to the tools and the teachings that we have available to us in our highly sensitive leadership training program. Number one, listening and responding. Listening and responding. Experiences of shame or humiliation often alienate and silence individuals in extreme cases, leading them to what researcher Jean Baker Mill describes as condemned isolation. Second, counteract to habitual shame shields is mutual empathy. Mutual empathy. Mutual empathy not only entails empathizing with another's experience, but it also encompasses empathizing with others' experiences of disconnection and tools and techniques others have used to shift this. So mutual empathy is not to be confused with sympathy. Mutual empathy is what has someone else done to make a positive shift with their shame shield, AKA what's worked for you. Number three, course correct to the habitual response of shame shields is authenticity. The practice of authenticity is about being authentic in a way that facilitates growth in a way that facilitates growth. Number four, way to counteract, course correct, that habitual tendency towards shame shields is movement toward mutuality. Movement toward mutuality. 
shaming or humiliating interactions can thrive within a context of dominant subordinate relationships, non-mutual relationships in which one person holds the power to degrade another. By moving toward mutuality, we are moving away from the power over dynamics that promote and perpetuate shame and humiliation. Final, humor. Humor can be an effective method of disarming or neutralizing some feelings of shame or humiliation. Aspects of your leadership training program, all three success pillars, community, core practice, and consistency. By engaging in all three, you will again by association, be shifting your habitual aspects or patterns of your shame shields. Also, specifically the training on RAINSIT, found in your online learning center, and of course, the shame transformation tools, also found in your online learning center. So again, how? How do we rise to the call in the midst of this post-traumatic aspect of our last two years of the global pandemic? How do we rise to the call in the midst of this collective denial, lack of acknowledgement, lack of process? We rise to the call as highly sensitive leaders by engaging in listening and responding, mutual empathy, authenticity, movement toward mutuality, and humor. So how do you choose to work with it rather than away, towards, or against? Choice is yours. Thank you for being a part of this Business Miracles podcast episode and for beginning to dip your toe into the journey of highly sensitive leadership training. If you are ready to truly use your sensitivities as strengths in all parts of your work and life, I invite you to connect for a one-on-one chat. You will experience being deeply listened to and together we'll get a sense of whether the highly sensitive leadership training programs are the best next step for you and your highly sensitive journey at this time. Just go to www.claritycall.com to schedule a conversation. We so look forward to connecting with you. Talk to you soon.